Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. Got a big show lined up, but first, as always, our marine weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. High today, 84, low 72, and water temperature is staying around 77 degrees. So real steady there for this whole week as far as the water temperature. The river readings, and again, talking about being steady, the Appalachian Old Brunstown, 8.5. Choctatch at Caraville, 1.7. Just not much we can say about it. We're planning for the weekend, getting out there. You know, again, I urge you to just be careful of, of uh, you know, sticks sticking up and rocks exposed. And I heard somebody the other day almost messed up the motor, hit a rock over there on the Chipotle River. So uh, be careful about that. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Looking at, really, we talked about this, neat tides for today and tomorrow. A little bit of a tide coming in Saturday. Uh, not a lot of activity, but we are going to have a south southeast wind uh, getting out, you know, changing from what we the pattern we've had for the past couple of weeks. The south southeast wind is going to be coming in at about five to ten. So everything's looking good. It's just very very dry. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. You know how it affects our food plots and different things we can do. But right now, you know, just keep keep everything as wet as you can. It's, it's really. It's really tough on the uh, on the animals too. Really to find some water. So we'll take our break and be right back. Okay, welcome back. Glad you're with us. I know a lot of y'all in various stages of your of your day. You're getting some of y'all just getting up, some of y'all getting ready to walk out the door to work, and some of y'all are, are not doing anything today except drinking a cup of coffee. But we welcome all of y'all. We're glad you're watching. Appreciate the feedback and appreciate your viewership. So let's take a look at some of these pictures. Some of these are humorous. Some of these are down downright uh, uh, fascinating. I'm gonna show you that one later. But this first one: How to become a millionaire by fishing. Start out as a billionaire, and. It's, if you look at the prices of fishing equipment and boats and all, you know exactly what they're talking about. So when I saw that, I said, I got to share that with our viewing audience. Okay, our right, next picture here. My sweet little granddaughter, Ashley Kay. Ashley made this little sign for me and, and Whitney helped her, but the, it's a Jeep house. Uh, I, that's my Jeep there. I, got, I built a little sort of a little shed and something for it and uh, they, they brought me a sign down to hang in it. So I, I was proud of that. The life is good and it is. Okay, let's go to some fish one. How about old Chris Kramer? Chris, he, he does a good job taking his family out fishing. He's a good outdoorsman there at Bill Kramer Show. That's Chris Kramer and his kids there. I, I told him I'm glad to see a man take his family out fishing. And what a pretty day they had. All right, how about this is uh, Gary Gorman put this on Panama City Fishing. And it caught this near Tyndall. So the pompano were out there. That's a nice size pompano there. Okay, that was me talking, I'll go into that. That's me talking to Historic Society. Mark and Michael Cowart, they did well out there in Louisiana. There's a lot of folks fishing and all. That's some nice fish right there. Mark and Michael out there, the I, uh, IFA tournament, redfish tournament. Okay. Seb Schofield, almost a weekly picture of him fishing on Deer Point Lake. And by the way, they're going to start that drawdown on November 14th. Seb will have to get some more fishing holes. This was funny, really. Uh, this guy sent this in. And what he has, you know, the, a big a big flounder is called a doormat. And his idea on it was to help clean. A lot of times, you know, fish slide around and everything. So his idea was to clean the doormat on a doormat to stop it from sliding around. So he sent some pictures. If you look at that, it's a doormat. Now, at first I thought, what a good idea. But then I got to thinking, how many of us have clean doormats? You know, most of them are sanding all this one of the doormats. So, I, you know, I think... Uh, Unless you just buy a new one and use it just for that, you got to do a lot of flounder gigging and all. But anyway, a good idea, good thinking and all, but I don't know if that would be practical for, for some of us. This picture here is special, okay? <laughs> the girl's name is Tess Randall Jolly. And I'm going to, uh, let me tell you about Tess at first. Tess, uh, we met her four years ago at a CEOPA uh, conference. One of the first ladies we met, we met she and her husband. They're from up here in Alabama. And she's, she's a genuine, real deal as far as outdoor girl. But she is a super photographer, internationally or nationally acclaimed. Her, photo, her photographs are amazing. And uh, each year we get to visit with her some. And such a sweet lady. And, and uh, they love the outdoors, do all kind of stuff like control burns. And they run their farm uh, for, for game and all. And, 
And she just spends a lot of time in tree stands. I mean, a lot of time, tree stands, ground blinds, and she does it right. She's a real deal on photography. And she posted this the other day, and I want you to look at it. This is a, this bird, now this is not doctored up anything, this bird is a gnat catcher, okay? It made repeated attempts one afternoon dropping from overhead limb to snatch a fat tick, okay? Can y'all see the tick? I'm gonna zoom in. See the tick on the deer, right there on top of his neck, right there in the center? Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna zoom back out now. But she took this picture of that gnat catcher of that bird trying to, and she said the bird kept trying to sweep down on it, but every, every time it did, the, the deer would raise his head, the book would raise his head back up. But what an awesome picture. That, that's outdoor photography at its finest right there. Okay, this is, we talked about this yesterday. This is Matt Gore, and this is the case of the month yesterday with his canine dog, and there's, there's the fish they confiscated. It was five they confiscated, and there's Matt right there. Matt was in my class at Mosley, played football for us, and just a fine young man, and what a good officer he's turned out to be. And I know that's exciting for them. Dana so How about some freshwater catfish? They're really good this time of the year. I had some yesterday down at Paramore's in Bluntstown, and they were really good. Fried catfish. Great this time of year. Okay, I think that's, that's all the pictures right there. One of the things I, I wanted to be aware of is on, on that photography and all, if you don't go in there and snap something like that, you know, automatically, you know, that's a lot of years of training and experience and all. But uh, I was just uh, fascinated with that. She'll, she'll post some pictures every now and then, but she has a, a volume of, of good pictures and all. I did want to uh, I did want to mention uh, the flounder. I got a, got information that at the State Park Pier, and that's one of the things about watching the show. You can get up to date information within 24 hours of what's going on. At the State Park Pier, they're catching a lot of flounder at night. I mean, they're just dropping it right over there and catching it. It's been real steady the last couple of nights, so. It might be an excellent time to get out there. You don't have a big tidal flow, but what that tells you is more than more than them just you know, catching fish at the, at the pier out there. Those flounder now are the first wave is actually in the Gulf of Mexico. So that you know, remember we talk about waves. They come in waves. They don't always just come out one time, sort of like the mullet do. They the flounder sort of come out stage by stage. And each cold front that comes in, that sort of pushes them a little bit closer to the pass. And each cold front just move on slowly. And that's why, you know, sometimes you go back to gig some one night, two or three later, two or three nights later, you go back and gig a couple more because they're just moving on out there. They don't do that big migration, not the, not the mullet, you know, they'll get in a big old ball, like the old timer said, a big old black ball, or backs, all you can see is backs and backs and backs, and they'll all go out together. Those flounders just sort of work their way out individually in small groups. So if, once, once they start catching them at a state park pier on a steady basis like they are now, they're out into the Gulf, that first wave and all. Now we get another uh, cold front coming in, hopefully sometime, but next time we do, they're gonna push them a little bit more. So just be aware of that if you love to flounder fish and all, that's a good time to do it and it's a good place to go right there off the State Park Pier. Okay, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Several things we wanna go over. Let's, let's look at the one of the things uh, to do in the fall is a great time of the year to go actually uh, go hog hunting, okay? The nights are cool. It's an excellent time. The meat's going to stay in good shape and all. It's been in good shape and the, the, fog, the, the hogs are fattening up over the, over the summer and, and the spring and all. They're in good shape. So, excellent time. Okay, look on the screen here. This is some Muddy River Outfitters. We've talked about them before. We've been out there. Paul Stokes does an amazing job with Muddy River Outfitters. Uh, what, what's cool is a night vision uh, hunt right there, and the, the great thing about it, you can go online and find it this morning. Let's see. Here are some pictures here. Let me see if I can get it. All right. Here, uh, all kind of testimonies. Go on their website, but you're talking about some really, some really big, big hogs and everything, and it is just a, there's Paul right there, and there's a Really good testimonials. I can vouch for it myself because we, we've gone up with them, when, uh, with Walter and, and the kids and all, and done some night vision. This, that in itself is exciting, shooting those night vision scopes, uh, you know, seeing the silhouette and everything, and, and it, it's just really exciting. So I want to recommend this as something you want to do uh, pretty soon before, you know, it gets heavy, heavy hunting in, in January or December and January. Fall is an excellent time to do, go do some hog hunting. Okay, I also want to mention the, the new, uh, this MVP magazine, I've mentioned it before, uh, it's, it comes out, there it is right here, every other month. 
done locally here, and I, I know well about it because they put me on the staff. They want me to write an article on fishing. That, that's pretty girl, not me, okay? But uh, right there, and I write a little article on this this month. We covered uh, uh, about what what fish you think I covered this month? The flounder. Wrote a little story on the flounder and all. Then they also they do one page on me. Then another guy, a chef, talks about how to how to cook. Okay, how to cook the flounder, and then uh, I, it's really good. So, but also there's some good human interest story. I had this little girl interview. She and her uh, little boyfriend was in my class, and she had this autoimmune uh, deficiency. Of, and she has a really, uh, she has a, it's an inherited tr what she had. And I say, I'm sorry, it's called a, a C H M R O. It's a rare disease she had. Uh, what a smiling face, and what a, she's 18 years old now. And a wonderful story. So some good human interest. She likes to do outdoor stuff. She's limited as what she can do. And then another story on a young lady here that, that's, had, that's had cancer and all and doing real well. So, you know, anytime you can do something local, like a, a local TV show, a little local magazine with human interest, uh, we're very supportive of it and we appreciate everybody doing that. So um, if you get a chance, it, it's free. I picked this up at Publix yesterday. I, the new issue just come out. Also, it comes out online. Want you to uh, okay? Next, what I have on here. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway. We said uh, each week on Thursday now, real time fisheries. We're going to do a giveaway. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, we're going to mix it up. Right? And this week, I think that we're going to give away a dozen baked oysters. Okay, a dozen baked oysters. That sound good? It'd be good lunch today. So I'm going to draw your name now. This for a dozen baked oysters, and we're going to. Uh, See who's going to win this, and the winner's going to be. If you don't want it, call me up, and I'll uh, I'll run down there. Tom Platt, Tom Platt. There you go, Tom. Congratulations. I was, I seen your name in over there real time, and we'll talk about that. So uh, now, what I want to do next? This is. Let's look on. I'm going to do Google Earth because I, I went Monday. Uh, Captain Roy and I went fishing over Sandy Creek. A lot of folks don't know a lot about Sandy Creek. I was thinking when I got over there. We don't. We talk about it. We don't really give a lot of information on it. So let's let's go to Sandy Creek. You go up there to Callaway and on, get on a Weewa Highway, okay? And then, and then you come. Of course, that's Highway 22. All right. I'm gonna try to keep everything in the center of the of the screen. That's that's Sandy Creek right there. And then here's the road you come down, and the boat landing. Uh, here, I'm going to put the boat landing right there in the center. Okay, right there. Great. In fact, I'm going to zoom in on this boat landing and talk about it. It's such a good boat landing. Uh, Captain Roy had a lot to do with getting it. But get it. Okay, Miss Holmes, Albie, Albie Holmes Road. And that story's in my book also about Miss Holmes. Anyway, the, the boat ramp itself is in really good shape. You can see the ramp right there. You walk out, launching real easy. And now some folks, bass fishermen go up the creek, but sort of what we did, and I'm going to just sort of move the screen. We went on down the creek, fish along these different places. You work your way down this creek, down this down the creek, and open it up. There's a little island right here. You can fish around that island some, okay? And then get on through here. It's a beautiful creek, and what a great thing is no development around it. Okay, all natural. Come on down here. Then you got some creeks feeding into it. And we just, uh, right there, that curve, we caught some fish right around the curve there, around both those curves, okay? Both of the bends up in that slough right there. Come on down off the point. Then what happens, there's a little pond back there, and we caught some fish, I'm gonna put it right in the center, right in this area right here. When I say that area, right there in the center of the screen. We caught some fish, and then we moved on down. And we, we fished about one o'clock. And you can get up in that area right there, Okay, then it, of course it goes in, it stay on, it goes on out. You, I'm gonna open up now. Of course you got Dan and the Lake, the big lake there. And then it goes on into, you can see it goes on into the bay, right in here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, it of course goes into East Bay, right there. But it's fishing all along. We actually went on across the bay, fished them in there, it wasn't neat. Uh, that's Raphael Island. I also, I've gotten to fish with, one from the other side, I came in from Farmdale Bayou with, with uh, Mr. Bobby Ecker. Well, he, he fished growing up in that area, so I, I fished on both sides of there with two, 
or two guys that really uh, have, have a lot of great stories and all. And of course, Mr. Eckers passed away. So that Santa Creek area, you just have to get in there. It's beautiful. Like I say, the, you know, you look out there, there's only one house on the whole creek, and it's a huge house. And I don't really know who owns that house, but that's the only one there. I don't know uh, if, if the state's going to buy some of that property and all. I can see, you know, that area is growing. I, I, I was envisioning a, a nightmare as far as it being developed. I could see people just piling in there and putting a little sub subdivision on it because it, it is a, 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 a treasure that we have here in the Panhandle, that Santa Creek area. Okay, so I wanted to talk about that. Let's see now. Also, uh, we've got some things, got Thanksgiving coming up. We're talking about doing Thanksgiving, some neat things with Thanksgiving. So, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do when we come back. We, you know, we had, just had this tragedy of the, of the young man falling out of a tree stand. That just, well, what a tragedy and all. What we're going to do, we're going to give away, see this right here? This is a harness. This is a, a safety harness for, for being in a tree stand. And we talk about it all the time, about safety and all, and we just we, we're going to do all we can to help. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a drawing or something to give this uh, safety harness away. So let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Our fishing game time for today. Let's put this right here so I don't forget it. Fishing game time for today, 10.23 to 12.23, and tonight, 10.44 to 12.44. And you know, we'll talk about hog hunting and, and them being so prolific, and it's really, it, it's really an eradication program to help the farmers because they can mess up a crop. And you've got fall crops coming in now, and they're, and they're getting out there. So uh, Jeff just sent me pictures. Our engineer here at Fox 28, Steve, uh, he, he has some property up here uh, north of town, and he does a good job with his camera. So I'm, I haven't, I'm just going to show these pictures right here. Let's see. Uh, this is just the other October 16th. So here, the, okay. You see, look at all those little pigs right there, folks. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that I can see right there. That's during the daytime. Okay, next picture. Uh, let's see. That's a bobcat. That's a bobcat. It sure is. Look at that bobcat. Y'all see the, oh, neat. Look at that. That's a great picture. Bobcat, you see how they sort of blend in? I almost couldn't see it. All right. Now, again, night time, look at those hogs. You think they have a problem? Wow. And you think how much feed they're going to eat right there. Okay. And then the, <laughs> the raccoons, the raccoons are smart. And now, I believe what he did, he put some, tie, some you know, carpet around here with tacks in it. To keep them to keep them off. We're gonna see if that works. I'm we're gonna get a little bit more information on that. That's that's interesting. A good way to do it. All right. And a bear. You talking? They having a whole wildlife show up there. Look at there. Look at there. On his hind legs. They. You think they don't smell where that's coming from? There's another picture. Okay. Goodness gracious. And let's see. Is that it? Yep. Okay. That's just. That just shows you. Now look, uh, bobcat, hogs, raccoons, and bear, and, and it's amazing what all comes out to the feeder. So, so be aware of that. Uh, okay, let's see. The next thing I want to do, let's jump over. I think I got time to get over this. We talked about braided line the other day, uh, and you know how it could uh, some of the people are using it now. It's nothing new. The, the original lines we used on the old reels, the, the old the old reels before even before we got into Zepco. That was a braided line. It just braided cotton. Now it's braided nylon. What they're using. So the idea of that is nothing new, but it's really strong now. So I I found some information. I'm just going to sort of show you just the brand, the top seven. We'll go from seven to one. And this is ranking of a of a group of people who group of uh, folks who did some testing. All this 31 hours of testing. They said. And I, you know, it's not a big company, it's just some folks doing it. So the first one is, I'm gonna, it's sort of a picture and all. It's called a Casking Superpower Low Visibility. That's number seven, okay? Number six is the Spider Wire Braided Stealth, okay? That's Spider Wire. Look at the pictures, a lot of be the best way to do it. Number five is the, I can't pronounce that, but you see the high sensitivity, ultra tough braid line, okay? That's number five. Number four is a Power Pro. A lot of us, I, I've used that Power Pro. I, I like that Power Pro. Okay, guaranteed to be round, smooth, and sensitive. All right, number three, we're looking at the, the Spider Wire Ultracast Invisible Superline. That's number three. 
Number two, they're calling for this suffix. I've had suffix before. This is a good line. I've used this line before. Very good. The suffix, uh, advanced super line. And number one, they call it the Skysper 1,000 meter premium quality. I, I think this is a, that's a huge roll. That, that's 300 yards or something, I believe. Or no, I'm sorry, it's 1,000 yards. But it's like $32. I, I looked at the price, $32, but it's 1,000 yards of, of it, okay? Now, uh, here's what we're gonna do. On, on the tree stand. I've got a couple other things too, but this is, uh, let's again talk about safety. Uh, I, I don't know a lot about the accident. All I know is it is a tragedy and our hearts goes out to the family and, and, and all, all the friends and all that. I know it's tough and all. So just, you know, please be careful out there. And like I've told you over the years, I've, I've gone basically to a ground blind. Now I do really like those platform, that like the one that we'll be giving away tomorrow from uh, down to Bill Kramer Chevrolet. Those four legs and the platform, those those are real safe and all. And but the the others and all the leans and all, I just I, I would never use those again. And uh, so just be aware of that. So irregardless of what you use, especially young people, these, this harness, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Uh, you you've seen the picture. It's a shoulder harness. And, and what we're going to do, I'm going to I've got a couple. I'll give a couple away just at random. Okay, but this is. It's a strap, the strap goes on, on you here, and then this, this ties on to it. Real, I saw them at Ciopa when they first demonstrated and all. So what we're, gonna, and what we're gonna do, and they work great. It just holds you there and you pull yourself back in, and it, it's well worth it. If you can get in the habit of doing this, it's the smartest thing you'd ever do. If you're gonna, you can use those lean to and those climbing and all, all you want to, but if you do, definitely use that, okay? What we're gonna do, here's what, how we're gonna do it. I'm not, Jeff and I were talking, we're not gonna draw the name out here because I know everybody doesn't need it. So what we're gonna do, you have my phone number from watching the show, hopefully, so this will go to some of our loyal viewers. When I, when I wrap it up here, which is shortly, I'm gonna, whoever calls me and gets through to me, it might be the first or second, whatever first person gets through to me, after, right after the show, I'm gonna give it to you. I can uh, leave it here at Fox 28, or I'll put it in my truck if I meet you somewhere and all, okay? So we're gonna do that. So call me right after the show. I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you all so much for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate the viewership, and you do something good for your fellow man today. And have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.